I say, excuse me, I, I know what kind of kick you should do. And I, I know why you're having the trouble you're having. And Stallone turns around and he looks at me. And he hey guys, this is volume two of a q and I had with Stephen Lambert. A bunch of you guys in the community ask questions. Make sure to check out his book, by the way, From the Streets of Brooklyn to the Halls of Hollywood. A lot of great stories in here. I'll link it in the description below if you want to pick it up from Amazon. In Volume 1, we talked about a very amusing Frank Duke story and some other ones, so check that out if you haven't seen it. Now, in Volume 2, we got a pretty cool Rambo 3 story involving that jump and spin kick that he did. And then we also discussed what it was like working with Paul Verhoeven in Total Recall. We're also going to cover Rucker Howard and show Kasugi in the movie Blind Fury, which Stephen Lambert did the fight choreography on. So you won't want to miss all that and more. Make sure to like the video to help support the channel. Make sure to subscribe if you're into this kind of content. And without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so Condo007 says, you've worked on Total Recall with Paul Verhoeven, which I believe, I think you called him an idiot in the book or something of the sort. Maybe uh, I called him, I, his nickname was, and I called him that right in front of his face. I called him Mad Dog. Okay. Mad so Dog Verhoeven. The question is, what was that like, and why do, why do you believe he doesn't direct Hollywood movies anymore? Well, you know, um, he's a very smart director. You know, I mean, he gets his films. Obviously, he's gifted in that mm -hmm. way. But me personally, uh, 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 he's a very cruel guy. That's what I found him to be. Mm. Very insensitive. Uh, as you read in the book, many people gotten hurt and uh, really doesn't care. And it's really sad. Maybe that's why, um, you know, I had my experience, you know, it's again, uh, things that are very serious that happen, you know, tend to be, I find very funny after the, after the effect uh, sometimes as most people do, you know, sure. you can laugh about it, yeah. you know, but uh uh, you know, people get hurt. People have questions. He has no time. It's only himself. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a team effort always. And uh, when accidents happen uh, uh, or when things need to be discussed uh, or understood, um, he doesn't care. Mm, that's that's interesting. what I found. And I worked a long time with him. You know, I, I, uh, I, I would laugh at him in all the time. And, uh, it, it's it it's funny, you know. People may say, "Well, why does Arnold work with him? Why did Arnold put up with it?" You know. Well, you, you know, uh, Arnold uh, uh, understood Paul Bohaven. You know, he made fun of him. He was upset sometimes when people got hurt. And Paul kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, asked the guy to to leave the set. You know, you're wasting my time. You know, bring somebody else to do it since he couldn't do it, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are only certain things you could do. But uh, he's a, uh, wasn't a nice guy as far as I was concerned. Very okay. insensitive, cruel guy. Hmm, you know, interesting. Somebody gets hurt and, and uh, doesn't want to spend the time to help him uh, when the hurt occurs. Just says, you know, get him off the set. I have no time to wait bring in another stunt guy that could do it, you know? Yeah. Cause come, come across as cold. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, here, <laughs> Nick Medina actually he's got three. Uh, he wants to know if you ever worked on Miami vice. No, no. no. Okay. If you ever worked with Christopher Lambert or if you're related, well, the book says you're not related to him, but have you ever oh. worked with him? No, I tell a funny story in the book. When I first got into business, I made some great friends. And, um, and uh, everybody thought, and I didn't know this at the very beginning, but uh, because for some reason people thought I, I made it so fast in the business, they really thought I was related to Christopher Lambert. That's funny. And as many times as I said, I'm not, they didn't believe me. And then there was a time years later, I tell this story in the book and I kind of, you know, relate and put them together. Um, Frank Sinatra's daughter, Nancy, married some guy named Lambert. And uh, they thought again, that I was related to Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
and uh, I couldn't convince them for years that I wasn't. So it's kind of a, you know, funny backstory. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm not related to Christopher. I wish I was. Sure. You know, He's a cool not, guy. You'd be immortal yeah. too, maybe then. Um, oh, the third question from him. If you've ever heard of Stallone or Arnold getting into any fights, I guess they're re he's referring to like real fights. No, Stallone and Arnold, I've, uh, I've hung out with both of them, as you read in the book, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I tell a lot of great stories about Arnold. Uh, he took me into his uh, circle, you know, uh, and we became very good friends. And I did a lot of things with him and, and uh, all his uh, close pals, um, um, uh, weightlifting wise and and stunt wise, like Joel Kramer, and, and acting wise, like Sven Thorsen, mm -hmm. and Peter Kent, and and all those guys. But uh, no, they love each other. They respect each other. Uh, they're very competitive. Oh uh, yeah, I could heard, see uh, that. They definitely seem yeah, the type in a good way. In a good way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I've never had heard a bad word uh, in private. You know, I mean, they both say funny stuff about him, you know, uh, but it's in a humorous way. Um, believe me, audience out there, they have tremendous respect for each other. And they both have uh, uh, different uh, personalities. But they both have, once you get to know them, they have both have a great sense of humor. You know, as uh, you can read in the book, at the very beginning, I had a complete different relationship with Stallone, as I did with Arnold, you know. I thought Stallone and I, you read in the book, I tell a, a funny story on Rambo 3. With, related to with his son, right? Yeah, yeah I yeah, thought I was that's pretty get amazing. at that moment, you know. Uh, but later on, we become good friends. You know, I tell a couple of good stories on Rambo 3. Yeah, you know? there's some good stuff in there. Give me the evil eye, um, <laughs> you know, and then I, then I go. Then I'm asked to go teach him to throw a, a kick. They couldn't figure out that he was doing a second unit, and one of the bad guys come out of a hole, and they and Stallone kicks him, and he couldn't figure out what kind of kick to do, and he couldn't make a kick work. You know, the stunt coordinator Vic Armstrong was doing something else, so Vic asked me to go and uh, teach him and to make sure it's a hit and to make sure it works, and. Uh, Vic knew the moment, you know, that we just mentioned uh, uh, about what happened. And I said, I don't think that's a good idea. And he said, just, just go. And when I went up there, they were trying to decide. They were still arguing about it. And, you know, I break my way in there and uh, I say, excuse me, I, I know what kind of kick you should do. And I, I know why you're having the trouble you're having. And Stallone turns around and he looks at me and he realizes this is the guy with his son. Uh, we're not going to talk about, you know, the first moment we locked eyes together. Sure. And he looked at me and, uh, you know, without even saying anything, I could, I could read it, his mind, you know. That's that idiot, punk, skinny guy that was in a Jeep, you know. <laughs> That's what I was reading that he was thinking in his mind. And I said, uh, and I looked at him, I said, let me show you and let me explain what you're doing wrong. And what they were doing wrong is it, they let the character, this bad guy come out of the hole too high, mm. right? So Stallone was having difficulty um, uh, kicking up to his face and he was using the wrong kind of kick. So I showed him the kick um, and uh, he did it fine. He did his own kick, and oh, you know, cool. the guy didn't come up from the hole as much. That's you know? really interesting insight. And and I, I was scrolling through his comments earlier. Somebody had commented on another comment. Um, if you actually had anything to do with that uh, Stallone yeah. kick, and when I first seen Rambo three, because I was the biggest John Claude Van Damme fan at the time, I'm like, that's kind of like a little Van Damme esque. I mean, not quite as graceful and, and nice of a jumping spin kick, but pretty damn good i mean but honestly nobody does it like van damme so it's not like a, a knock on stallone or anything i mean nobody does it even today i want scott atkins came and do that kick like van damme you know of course van damme made this kick extremely famous 
I have to admit that I've never seen anyone do it quite as good as Van Damme. It had such height, such grace, such fluid movement and such flexibility. Uh, really, the gold standard for this kick is Van Damme. So. Well, it's the way we shot it. You know, I talked to good. the cameraman and uh, told him where to put the camera because he couldn't do it that high, but it made it look high. Yeah, no, you would have totally didn't think the guy didn't come up. Like, he got air on that, you know? I mean, it, it looked like it, at least. Yeah, and the guy didn't come up very high from the hole. Interesting. Very interesting when insight into that. Kick. When we did the kick. You know, separate shots, you know, tricky. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Wow, so that's he awesome. turned around to me after we did it, and we got print. He turned around to me and... Uh, you know, just gave me the th thumbs up and we were friends from then on there. And yeah. I'm just, I mean, that's one of the scenes I always remember, man. And people talk about it. What about when Stallone did that, you know, jump and spin kick? I'm like, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, he did a good job. And, uh, you know, he's a wonderful guy and has a great sense of humor once he gets to know, know you. But if he doesn't know you and you see him, he could be a little intense because he's so serious because he cares. You, and that's why he's the guy you know, that I said is still on top, whereas you don't unfortunately have Seagull, Van Damme and, and Arnold like where he's at now. I mean, he's back on top like he was in the 90s, you know, which is great, which is awesome. Yeah. But OK, so uh, Alex Royster, ask him anything about Sloan. So we, we talked about Sloan and I learned that you uh, taught him that spin kick in Rambo 3, which is awesome. Um, and then... Yeah, okay, so it's really just uh, some stuff on Stallone, uh, which we talked about. So the next guy, Kondo007, well, I can't uh, he mentions it. that – oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just want you to know I, I, I admire – you know, I've had quite a few contacts with Stallone. I admire him. You know, he works very hard. He cares about what he's doing, and, uh, and um, you can understand why he's so successful. Yeah, you know, there's a true passion he, there. He, I mean – you can tell. I uh, absolutely love the guy. Nothing but respect. And anybody who watches the channel knows how much I love Stallone. On Rambo 3, connected to everything. In a good way. He's involved in everything. Yeah. And that's the way you should be. No, definitely. Definitely. Okay, so we did talk about Rambo 3. Um, this guy is asking specifically, though, awesome 4K. He's asking specifically about the stick fight Sloan had at the beginning. Did you do anything with the, the stick fight on Rambo 3 or, or not? Well, I think that he did that at another location. Okay. Some place. It, it was not only shot, uh, you know, where we shot it in the United States, but it was shot other places. Hmm. So I don't know who he got. Okay. Yeah. So not involved in that. Later on that show. I just happened uh to be asked to go teach him that kick because vic armstrong was busy no and that was cool and that was a really vic, fun story yeah and vic and i are great we're great friends are great friends and uh he knew what i could do yeah one of the guys commented on his comment by the way justin falls on he said uh not also ask about the jumping Spin kick Sloan did in that movie, which is awesome that we addressed it. And then he said that must have been a response to Van Damme gaining fame at the time, which I, I, I don't know, but maybe Sloan wanted in on some of that karate. <laughs> you know, you know a, a lot of people copy a lot of things. You know, I've uh, I've been sent articles. You know, I did a thing on a Revenge of the Ninja on a van. I did an aerial cartwheel into the front window Jeez. as it was driving, and then and this was all for real in one shot, no cuts. Crazy. Yeah, and years later. Um, uh, the bald guy, um, uh, martial art bald guy, uh, Jason Statham, Jason Statham, uh, did the same thing in a movie CGI and they compared the article compared revenge of the ninja to Jason Statham. This guy did it for real. And Jason Statham. There's no way they do that for real nowadays. <laughs> you know? And there was a few things like that, uh, that I was involved with where they copied a, a movie that I, did something in one of the, in one of the ninja pictures, and they they copied it. Oh, go, going back to Awesome Four yeah. Ks, other part of the question. So Stephen was sword fight coordinator in the film Blind Fury. You should ask him questions about the end sword fight between Rucker Hauer and Shokasugi. Yeah, I I coordinated. I had everything 
choreographed before show even got there. Uh, show was there for about two weeks. Um, and uh, I had it all set in stone, uh, more or less. Um, uh, I was very blessed. I was very lucky. The uh, director of that show, uh, Philip Noyce, was a great guy. And he had a lot of respect for me. And we got along really well. And he didn't have that part casted. They couldn't find a guy. And uh, finally, one day I was walking uh, by his office to have a conversation with him. And he was right in the middle, you know, pulling his hair out, saying, I can't find a guy, you know. Yeah. And I just said, Philip, you know, uh, if you want to take it uh, from uh, your fight coordinator, I have a guy in mind that I think just do a wonderful job. And he said, who is that? And I said, a guy named Sho Kazuki. Let me show you some of his videos. And I showed him Revenge of the Ninja and the Domination. And he got the job, sure. you know, um, what went on, I won't talk about, you know, yeah, yeah. our relationship changed over the years. Yeah. I mean, and we'll yeah. talk about that in the whole ninja segment, but we'll, we'll get into that. But, but, uh, uh, I had it all put together and, and, uh, I will tell you that, uh, Shokuzuki was absolutely shocked at the ability uh, of uh, Rucker Hauer with his sword. Um, he couldn't believe, you know, that show, that uh, Rutger Hauer wasn't practicing for 50 years. That's how amazed he was. Very impressed. Yeah, because Shokasugi is a master swordsman. So Rutger Hauer, did, so did you train Rutger Hauer? How yeah. did he get to that level? So I quick. trained him for yeah. three months, six times a day, uh, six times a week. Okay. Uh, you know, anywhere from six to 10 hours a day. And when I train a person, it's not only martial arts. Mental um, stuff, right? Uh, excuse me? Me mental, you get, oh, uh, yeah, yeah work on all big that. part of it. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, um, uh, Rutger is probably the best actor, non-martial artist I ever trained. Wow. So gifted. You know, I, I tell a story uh, in the book that his calves were as big as your head. And I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> That's crazy. That's funny. Yeah, he was a soccer player. And for some reason, and I'm, I wasn't exaggerating. I wish I took a, a picture of his calves, but he had tremendous calves. They were as big as my head. You, you know what's funny? This reminds me, like when I was in college, uh, one of my professors used to always wear, wear shorts and I was really into bodybuilding. And he literally had the most ridiculous calves. They look like Mr. Olympia caliber, huge, rippling, shredded muscle. And the rest of them looked more athletic, but it, it was weird. It's just like, dude, you got better calves than Mr. Olympia. So, you know, just a calf genetic freak, like I guess Rutger Howard sounds like. Yeah. And before we started uh, training, he was uh, about 48 pounds overweight. Mm. He lost 48 pounds for that movie. Wow. Oh, yeah. It, he was heavy. He was heavy. And unfortunately, after that movie, he started to get heavy again. Okay, he, he got all that. Away, you know, before he started getting real sick, he was very heavy. Oh. Uh, uh, you know, but uh, he was a hard worker. And he was so gifted. And I tell a few funny stories. About yeah, there's so much in that book. It's incredible yeah. that it's just like one book instead of like a I, volume of books, you know? Yeah, such a great value I where I first start training him. And to my surprise, you know, I thought I was going to get fired. You know, it seems to happen it? to you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just skinny, old, cute little Steve. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, people people think otherwise. But, you know, you, you read the book. If you get a chance, if you want to read the book, uh, Rutger Hauer, we were great friends. We saw each other many times. We had lunch every time he came to, to California. Uh, nice. We had a great time. We were very good friends. And, um, and uh, you know, but uh, he had sides of him that people didn't know. And I explained it in the book, and I tell it in a very funny way. I thought, like I said, I thought I was going to get fired uh, when I first started uh, training him. And if you ask me why... If you get the book, you'll know. So many good details. 
All right, that's going to do it for volume two of the Q&A with Stephen Lambert. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, check out his book. I linked it in the description below. You can buy it on Amazon. In future Q&A volumes, we're going to be covering, we got more stuff on the quest, some stuff on Jason Statham, some stuff on uh, Lambert's thoughts on who'd win between Seagull and Van Damme, or even Michael J. White and Bruce Lee. So you won't want to miss it. I'll see you guys next time.